Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us for communion as we celebrate Good Friday together. And as we do so, I wanted to take a few minutes and just explain the foundations of communion and where that comes from. Uh, first of all, note that there are many times in the scriptures where we are called to remember. Uh, we remember certain things typically that are very important. An example of this would be remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Uh, this was an important thing for uh, the people of God to recognize that uh, truly God was blessing us and he was providing for us. He had created the earth in six days and then he wanted us to rest. And I think that's still just as important for us. So we're still supposed to remember it and keep it holy. Um, there are other times that he calls us to remember. I think of the Israelites when they crossed through the Jordan River. Uh, they're instructed to take 12 stones, one for each of the tribes of Israel, and they go and they set up a monument, a memorial, where they rest that night. And they're told that when they walk by that memorial with their children and their grandchildren, that they are to explain to them what those things mean. Uh, you may be aware of uh, the fact that Passover just began. Uh, Passover began, I believe it was uh, the day before yesterday. Uh, actually, maybe it was two days before yesterday. Anyways. Um, as a part of Passover, what they're really doing is remembering God's deliverance. The Israelites have been slaves in Egypt for uh, close to 400 years. And as they have been slaves in Egypt, they cried out for a deliverer and God sent Moses. And as Moses comes, he brings a series of plagues which are intended to cause uh, Pharaoh to, to let the people go. The last one is um, the passing over of the death angel. And any household that had the blood of the lamb sprinkled on it was spared and nobody was harmed. However, if you did not have the blood of the lamb on your door, then the firstborn child was uh, taken on that night. Um, immediately afterwards, the Egyptians concede and they allow the Israelites to leave. And the Israelites are instructed to never forget, to remember uh, this thing that God had done to deliver them. Uh, there have been many times that we have been called to remember as well, to never forget. Uh, some of the folks who attend our church and participate in uh, communion with us even today were alive when uh, Pearl Harbor was attacked. And there was a, a cry from the people not to forget, to remember what had taken place. Uh, more recent, in September 11, 2001, uh, there were terrorists that flew into uh, buildings in Washington DC and New York and in doing so they took the lives of almost 3,000 people and again the cry was never forget. Um, the greatest thing that has ever happened in humanity is not what's happened here in the United States, it's not what happened back in the days of Moses or in Joshua or even at the days of creation. The greatest thing for us ever to remember is the fact that God himself sent his son to die for us to pay the price for our sins. And as he did so, he didn't call us to remember much. Uh, there are times that he talks about us remembering what he taught and the Holy Spirit being given to remind us of the things that he had taught us. But the real thing that we're called to remember is his sacrifice. As he met with his disciples on the last night that he would be with them, they gathered together, they ate, they had fellowship, but as they ate, he took bread and he said, this is my body. This represents my body that is broken for you. Every time you eat it, I want you to do it in remembrance of me. And then he took wine. And in our case, we're going to use apple juice at our house. You can use whatever you want at your house. It's okay. Uh, but he took the wine and he said, this is my blood that is shed for you. Now, he was physically there. So it wasn't literally his body and it wasn't literally his blood. But it represented his blood. And the, the disciples were being encouraged to never forget, to remember what he was about to do for them. Uh, I will say that uh, sometimes we have diminished Jesus' instructions on that occasion to being reserved for something that you do in a religious service. Uh, often the pastor stands in front of the church and he has a tray full of bread and then a tray full of grape juice. And then we distribute it. And in the middle of that ritual, we remember that this is his body and this is his blood. But the reality is Jesus didn't say just when you have a church service, you should do this. Obviously, I would love to be in a church building with the entire body of Christ today, but that's not really an option for us. But we can still fulfill the calling that Jesus gave on that night with his disciples. 
It says, every time you eat this, do it in remembrance of me. That means that when you gather around your kitchen table like we are today, we're supposed to remember that his body was broken for us. So when we go to eat that bread, it should be an opportunity for us to celebrate and to give thanks and maybe even to consider what that sacrifice has meant to us. How is my life different because of Jesus' sacrifice? That blood that was shed. Uh, it is through his shed blood that we find redemption for sin. Uh, all of our sins are forgiven and we are made whole and we are made new. And I want to encourage you today as you participate in this act with us. I want to encourage you to remember what Jesus has done. In this life, he has set you free and he has given you victory and he's given you the opportunity to live a transformed life. Uh, in the life to come, he has paid the price for your sins to be forgiven so that you can come boldly before the throne of God and you can know that you don't have to be ashamed. He has set you free and he has redeemed you. You are truly one with Christ. So I want to encourage you with that. We're going to take a moment. We're going to pray. Um, Andrew's going to play just for a little bit while we do. And I want to encourage you as you pray, just to take the opportunity right now to thank the Lord for what he's done. And perhaps even if you have a need for confession, to come before the Lord and to confess where sin has been present and to ask God to forgive you. He is faithful and he is just. He will do it. Um, so I want to encourage you to do that during this time. And then we'll all participate in the sharing of breaking and bread, breaking bread and sharing of uh, juice together. Let's pray. Father, we come before you, and we are grateful for your grace and for your mercy. We are grateful that although we are imperfect people and we have fallen short of your glory, your expectations on so many occasions, your grace is still extended to us. We come before you today thankful that your sacrifice was sufficient to pay for every sin that was ever committed. Father, I thank you that you allowed your body to be broken. And in doing so, you kind of paved the way for us to allow our old selves to die and our new selves to take life. We are new creations today in you, transformed. I pray that you would help each of us to walk as those who are transformed. Help us every day to live as those who have a hope, those who have been changed and are now choosing to walk under your lordship. Father, I pray for the one who today, perhaps as they participate in this ritual, in this act, that they are reminded of where they have allowed sin to exist. And I pray right now that as they confess before you, that you would once again extend your grace to them. You would forgive them and you would give them the opportunity to be made new. Father, we thank you that we are never so far gone that you cannot reach into our lives. And I pray today that you would use this digital format maybe as an opportunity for someone to pray and seek your forgiveness in a way that they have not done in a long time or maybe they never have before in their lives father i pray for your grace to be extended i thank you for the blood that was shed knowing that it is by your blood being shed that all sins are forgiven without the shedding of blood there is no forgiveness of sins but because of what you've done all of us have the opportunity for forgiveness. Thank you for the promise of eternal life. That once this life is over, we have something far greater to look forward to. We know that this world is really messed up right now. There's junk that's taking place, political stuff, there's illness, there's division, there's all kinds of stuff that's taking place and we feel so helpless and so out of control. But we know today that this world is not all that we have to look forward to. For those of, those of us who have been redeemed by your blood, have the promise of eternal life, eternity in heaven with you, and all the perfection that it offers. We'll never again have to deal with sickness or death or sin or even temptation, for it'll all be removed. We will be in the presence of a holy God. And I pray today that you would help us to just get a glimpse of that, even as we participate in communion together. You know that the bread that we're about to use is just ordinary bread. The juice is just regular old ap apple juice. But today, they represent something far greater to us. They represent your sacrifice 
which is all about your love and compassion for the people you created. I pray today that as we participate in the receiving of these elements, that this will be an opportunity for us to truly draw near to you. This week is all about the cross and all about the resurrection, but I pray that you would come alive in us today. Thank you for paying the wage of our sin. Now I pray that you would give us life. Use this act to bring honor and glory to your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we're going to go ahead and pass the bread. And then as we do, we're going to pass the cup. And I'm going to actually ask if each of you would just take one piece of bread and then pass it around the rest of the way. And then we also have a glass. This is, uh, we don't have a lot of wine glasses around our house. Uh, so this goblet actually it says on here, Junior Senior Banquet, Central Wesleyan College, April 3rd, 1993. This is actually something that we received at me and Linda's first date together a long, 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 long time ago. So, um, as we participate in this, what I'm going to encourage you to do, you can do it however you want. There's different ways that people do it. Some will simply drink out of the same cup. Uh, some will dip in a cup. Often we have multiple cups that are used in, in the church services. There's different ways to do this. We're going to dip our bread in the, the glass of juice. Um, and I will just remind you of the words which Jesus spoke to the disciples. This is my body that is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. This is my blood that was shed for you. Do this in remembrance of me. pray once more. Father, we thank you for what this represents to us. We thank you for what you've done. So often we, when we remember the death of an individual, we remember with solemnness and brokenness. But today it's not about brokenness or defeat or anything like that. This is all about victory. For you have given us the victory over sin by allowing your body to be broken and your blood to be shed. Thank you for what you have done. May your grace be extended to each of us far beyond this ritual, but every moment of our lives, may we walk in the grace that you've extended. May that grace be sufficient to us. In Christ's name we pray, amen. I do want to encourage you, if you are participating with us at home or wherever you may be, maybe you feel the need to continue with prayer. Just because we're done here doesn't mean you have to stop. There are certainly many needs that you could pray for, and I encourage you to do so. Uh, if you would like to um, take a break, that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to be done here, but if you feel led to pray a little longer, maybe just to thank the Lord for what He's done, uh, I encourage you to do so. Thank you for the privilege of sharing this with us today, and may God be blessed and honored by the way you live your life outside of this event. Thank you.